We're 6% of the population and we represent the majority in our justice and social service systems and high school dropout rates. There's been a lot of caring people who've worked in service agencies and government that really care about the average and negative Aboriginal statistic that's out there. So if we all care so much and spend long hours, how come the results aren't there? kids already been apprehended, we're probably looking at a PGO. So if you look at conventional case management and social work practice, you'll see decision making at the hands of professionals and judge and social workers, which is dependency. It's not teaching people how to set goals for themselves, how to solve their own problems. You should probably go to ADAC for an assessment. Fundamentally, the way we're engaging and working with families isn't working. For me, like I encourage our people to go back to the roots of their teachings and find the, find the answers within there. Pre-European contact, our Aboriginal families lived a healthy communal lifestyle. Children were at the center of the community. It was everyone's responsibility to raise the child. When there were difficulties or problems, practice was to meet in a circle, you know, and to discuss it. Family group conferencing really derives its um, knowledge base of practice around the circle process and around traditional Aboriginal values of trust, respect, courage, love, dignity. You know, it's not a new idea. It's in, in practice for years and years in the past, you know, unwritten, you know, but people knew what to do, you know. It's a model that was there a long time ago, and we're just reactivating it. What is this business about, like, leaving Kyla? We make a decision, and we call our family together, you know, so all my family gets together in a room, and we talk about this. What is the best outcome for this child? Do you know how many times that little girl has called me and asked where you two were? Sometimes it's a challenge just to try and get those families together, you know, because of the whether the differences or the bitterness or whatever that's been happening you know, or for years or whatever, you know. But if they love their children or grandchildren, you know, then uh, they do make it. see the happiness in their eyes and everything, you know, that they can look around and see all their relatives that care, you know. And to me, uh, that's awesome when you can see that within a child, you know, yeah. So that you know that the child knows itself, that it's gonna, you know, that all these people, that my aunties and uncles, they're here. I'm gonna ask everyone here in this circle, once we do the smudging in that, and a prayer, that you will all get a chance to talk, okay? One, you'll each get a chance to say your piece in this circle. Then what we're going to do is we're going to uh, get into a family circle. Family group conference is uh, almost like a sacred circle, you know, uh, gathering, like, you know, to talk about uh, what is the best interest of the children. We start off with the uh, sweet grass and everything and prayers. 
everybody just say a prayer for your songs. So that we get guidance from the spiritual part as to what needs to happen within that family and those decisions that will be honored. They're going to be decisions that are in the best interest of the child because of what prayers and everything that are also included in it. To me personally, this is where the, the decisions need to be made on behalf of those children. I've been working for children's services for going on six years. Um, and in that time, I've probably been part of anywhere from six to eight family group conferences. So if it comes to the point where a family has been given some opportunity to make some changes in their life and they're not adhering to or they're not following the a plan that they've helped create to um, get the children back into their care and they're continuing with abusing substances, uh, abusing alcohol, engaging in domestic violence and they're, they're not progressing to a point where the child would be safe back into their care. I consult with my supervisor and then determine if, if it's appropriate referral for family group conferencing. Well, family group conferencing really can can be slotted in at any point along the service array, like right at the front end or right at the back end of it where children permanent guardianship order status has already been granted. I'm seeing now that we've been doing family group conferencing in our region for the last six years that there's a shift to do uh, family group conferencing more closer to the front end. A referral is essentially four or five pages and then we would just attach the ongoing case assessment review along with the plan that is already done to it. So it's not a whole lot of work um, for a caseworker to do. The family is the basic unit of society and its well-being should be supported and preserved. I think there's an assumption that it's very, it's costly to facilitate and to bring other family members um, here. It costs a lot of money, but my perception is if a child is reunited with a family member, it's costing um, government and taxpayers less money than having a child remain in a foster home or in a group home is really relinquishing some of the responsibility around decision making for these children and giving that back to the family. That's a struggle sometimes for us, for caseworkers, to relinquish that. But good things always, good things come out of it. I believe in a creator and that he's going to be here to help, help us deal with this very difficult situation. Each person has a voice and there's no uh, obstacles in between. Uh, there's no table in between the circle. Everybody's facing each other in a circle. I just want to go home. Children have a voice in this process. No one person in that circle is higher than anybody else. Uh, so there's equality and balance there. There's some FGCs where the families um, are not, like I said, they're not willing to, to go there. I think we are giving her a good home and I'm just, it's, I'm just having a really hard time with this whole, this whole thing. I'm trying to figure out why we're here. Uh, we're not that bad at parents, you know, like. They're not willing to take that ownership and those are the ones that are not successful in, in meeting the child's permanency needs. I'm just feeling really like this is a real blame game. They're not in a position where they're ready to take that responsibility and ownership for what has happened and it's easier to blame, to blame somebody else for what has happened instead of saying I've, I've done this, I take ownership of it and I'm willing to heal and start the process of healing with my family. It's not like we're doing it every day, seven <laughs> days a week. Oh, do you, do you recognize you might have a little bit of a problem with alcohol? I don't know who phoned, Kyla is safe. but they she's saw her, her at mother, home alone. She's got her father, she's fine. Whenever I get involved in uh, family group conferencing, and uh, it is always good that for me to say that uh, I think each one should have an elder, you know. Leave the bitterness, the anger outside. I sense that uh, when there's an elder there, she brings that uh, sort of like a peacefulness over the families, like in, and the elder can come right out and say uh, whatever it is that he needs to say to gratify that situation, like, you know. The elder is really very powerful in the family group conferencing because when there's blame starting to happen, 
he brings the family together. Thank you, Creator, that give us another life, a day to live. For me, when there's bitterness like that, I always tell them that, you know, that uh, we're not here for that, you know. We're going to have to do something here on the best interest for the children. I said, if you don't do that, I said, then the government's going to do it for you, and you're not going to be happy, I said, you know. So now is not the time for bitterness, I said. Now is the time to make the best decision for those children. The first point of change is awareness. And this process allows family that opportunity to develop a context and understanding where the hurt's coming from and why it's happening. Because they, as a family group, for the first time in the history of their family, are able to talk about it in a safe way. They start realizing that um, they cannot change what has happened before. They cannot change what happened 10, 15, 20 years ago. But what they can do is start changing now. With that dialogue that takes place, a lot of family members will come away with, I didn't, I didn't really think he thought that way. Geez, I learned something different about him you know, or her. They see a different side and different parts of family members that they haven't ever seen before. You tell me that you're a good parent and looking after her. So why is she coming to my place to get up lunches to go to school? There will be families that you will run across that you figure will never come up with an answer or anything right for those children, yet they'll surprise you. They will come up to a decision. That's why you lost your daughter. That's exactly why you lost your daughter. What we always try to tell the people there that are in these conferences is that you need to trust the process. I can tell you that families love the process and they appreciate the opportunity to have gone through it and only wished it could have happened sooner in the life history of their family. That's a consistent message that we get back. You may not get the outcome that you think you're expecting when you go into a family group conference. They're very emotional times for the family. You may go into it with a certain mindset on how things are gonna, going to unfold and then they don't, but they're still there's always good that comes out of a family group conference. Because at the end of the day, people are very compassionate. You know, they have a conscience. We all operate the same as human beings. And they want to see good done for children. And not only are they placing the children, but there's also healing happening in there. You know, and you see that at the end. Because a lot of times you're going to see that bitterness just melt away. And that's just amazing, you know, the turnaround that can happen just from that one week or wherever you're having that family group conferencing. It's a time and opportunity for those families also to put their differences away, you know, and that actually that healing can happen. You know.